What's up guys, today we're going to be talking about 5 awesome smartphones that you can pick up for the $200 price point range. And guys, this is a slightly updated version of the one I did last month. We actually got a, quite a few price changes here. Uh, first off, I want to kick it off with the Galaxy S21. So this phone on eBay, it's $239 for refurbished one. On Amazon, $250, so you can sort of choose which one you like you know, better. Uh, but the S21 is a fantastic phone. It goes way under the radar uh, for some reason. A lot of people forgot about this phone, I guess, because Samsung did put the plastic back on here. But guys, this phone does not feel cheap. Nothing feels cheap about this phone. It still feels like a flagship phone. And the specs are, you're getting crazy specs for uh, the price that you're paying for this phone. So you got the aluminum frame, you got the plastic back. Yes, it doesn't feel as premium as a glass phone. But guys, it still feels premium. It has the metal rails. Um, also, the design still looks great. Uh, it's IP68 dust and water resistant. This phone has a beautiful dynamic AMOLED display, 120 hertz HDR10+, plus, gets up to 1300 nits peak brightness at 6.2 inches, 1080p 421 for the PPI. It's a beautiful flat panel and I think anybody you know, will really appreciate the panel. And what's awesome about this phone, is it has Android 13 and this phone will have a pretty long uh, life cycle since it's running the Snapdragon 888, it launched with Android 11. So when this phone is done with major OS updates, I believe this phone gets five years of security patches as well too. So very long lifespan. The Snapdragon 888 processor is still extremely fast when you're gaming or pretty much doing anything, emulators, whatever you wanna do on this phone. But my only thing with this phone is I think it gets a little bit hot doing more intensive stuff like maybe video recording and playing games for hours. Um, it is, it does get a little bit hot to me. Uh, that's my only complaint about this chipset. 128 gigs of internal storage and eight gigs of RAM. Uh, you also have pretty good stereo speakers on this phone as well. NFC is on board, uh, the under the display fingerprint sensor, all of your additional features like Samsung desktop support and all that good stuff is all on here. And it's just a fantastic phone when it comes to the price that you're paying. Uh, you basically getting a flagship phone. You really can't tell the difference from an S21 from like an S22, S23 really for the for the casual person. This phone still has awesome cameras, a 12 megapixel standard, 64 megapixel telephoto lens, and then you have a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It can shoot an AK24, and then you have a 10 megapixel selfie cam that shoots in 4K60. I still think this phone takes fantastic photos, guys. Uh, color science is still pretty good, dynamic range, detail. I think it just takes fantastic photos if you're just out point and click. I think it does still pretty decent in low light. Um, honestly, the pictures, they look a lot similar. Like if you look at it from an S22, even the S23, it's not a massive, massive difference. So they still it still takes fantastic photos. The battery life on here is pretty decent. It's a 4,000 milliamp battery, 25 watt charging, wireless and reverse wireless charging. Again, for a light user, you can kind of get through the day with this phone. Like if you're not doing anything too intensive. Um, but the battery experience for me was pretty decent. Um, so overall, this is a fantastic phone. There's nothing bad about this phone for this price point. If you go ahead and pick it up, I think you will really uh, like it. Next is the Pixel 6a. Now this phone, I seen it on Amazon for 170, but that was locked Verizon, unlocked, uh, refurbished. It's like 260, which I think is still a fantastic deal. And this phone is awesome. I typically don't like recommending uh, mid-range phones but this is an exception because this one has a fantastic uh, camera so let's go ahead and just dive into that one 12.2 megapixel lens on here 12 megapixel ultra wide shoots in 4k 60 and 8 megapixel selfie cam shoots in 1080p 30. this phone takes the best steals on the list and what's funny is this phone won mkbhd's uh smartphone blind test it actually beat all the other flagship phones so it's pretty crazy this phone takes phenomenal photos guys especially for the price just beautiful images google's image processing is here now this one is using the older sensor so it's not using the sensor that's in the uh 6 pro and 7 pro it's using the older one i kind of like kind of like the the way this takes pictures too i've always really liked uh their their older sensor that they was using but man this phone takes fantastic photos if you're looking for an excellent you know still taker excellent in low light as well too it's just overall great uh you know phone to take pictures on the video is pretty decent on here too but uh, the color signs and the image processing is awesome i think on the 6a and this phone it's got an aluminum frame now it does have a plastic back but honestly when this phone first came out a lot of people thought it was glass including me it kind of felt like glass um, but it's not it's plastics but it still feels very premium i think it still looks good as well too 
Uh, it is IP67 dust and water resistant. It does have the 6.1 inch OLED display, HDR, 1080p 429 for the PPI. The only downside with this display is that they didn't add any type of 90 hertz or 120 hertz with the screen. Now, while the screen is still pretty smooth at 60 hertz, that is like, I guess, one minus about this phone. Uh, it is a flat display as well, too, which is nice. But again, I would have liked to see, you know, 120 hertz. Uh, on this phone or at least 90 now the good thing about these pixel phones is they run a pure stock version of android so when android 14 comes out you'll be one of the first to get it you're the first to get the betas um so that's a really nice experience and it's just very clean no bloatware just a very google experience that i think a lot of people will come to appreciate uh, this does have the google tensor chip which does a pretty good job it's plenty enough fast for i think the average person bouncing in and out of applications, casual gaming. I have a gaming test if you guys want to check that out. It does a pretty good job uh, at doing those things. So I played Call of Duty, PUBG, it ran them fine. So if you're trying to do casual gaming, it can definitely do that. You also have 128 gigs of internal storage and six gigs of RAM on here. NFC is on board. The fingerprint scanner is an optical one and it works fine. You just have to apply a little bit of pressure to it. but. Uh, it does work, and the battery life is actually pretty good on the 6A. It's a 4,410 milliamp hour battery, 18 watt charging. There is no type of wireless charging on here though, but this definitely will last you all day. You actually get pretty good battery life uh, with this phone. So the 6A is also a great option to think about. Next, we got the LG V60. Now, this phone is just awesome. You can find it well under 200 bucks actually these days. And um, it's just an awesome device, one of my favorite devices on this list. And also, we are expected to get the Android 13 update. This phone is actually still getting security patches, so that's really good. So any day now, we should get the Android 13 update. This phone is built like a straight-up tank. It's got an aluminum frame. It's got a glass back. It's IP68 dust and water resistant, and it just feels excellent in the hand. Um, you also have a 6.8-inch P OLED display. It's HDR10+. 1080p 395 for the PPI. Now this is an overall beautiful display. I think it looks really good even for a 1080p panel uh, on this size display. Um, it's plenty bright. Like I said, big display, water drop notch here. But the cool thing about the V60 is that if you go on eBay, you can get a uh, $100 dual screen case with this phone you could basically turn it into two phones or do true multitasking they also have games that are compatible like you can see the map on PUBG and stuff like that so it's a very cool um, you know little additional thing with this phone that I absolutely love and like I said it's really not that much uh, not really that expensive because if you get the phone for you know 190 180 get the dual screen case you're not spending that much and you get a really powerful multitasking experience this phone also has the Snapdragon 865 chip. I did a gaming test if you guys want to check that out. It still pretty much plays anything in the Play Store that you can throw at it. PUBG, Call of Duty, anything I threw at it, it was able to play at a pretty high frame rate. So I was really happy about that. Not only that, but this phone also has micro SD card support, 128 gigs of internal storage, and 8 gigs of RAM on the base model. You also have stereo speakers, which sound great, really good bass, very loud. But you also have a headphone jack with the quad DAC on this phone as well so for people who are die-hard headphone lovers not only do you get a headphone jack but you get the quad deck which makes the experience overall better for people who have you know a high quality pair of headphones you also have on here pretty good cameras um, it's a 64 megapixel standard 13 megapixel ultra wide 0.3 depth sensor it can shoot actually in 8k 30 and then you have a 10 megapixel selfie cam that shoots in 4k 30. Uh, the shots on here are pretty good, I still think, especially if you're out in good lighting. I think it takes phenomenal photos, really good color science on here as well, too. I even compared it to some of the newer phones, the 14 Pro, the uh, S23. So if you guys want to check that out to see how it does compared to newer phones. But overall, the image quality, I think, for the average person is going to be more than, uh, uh, more than good. So you have a under the display fingerprint sensor on here as well. And also, guys, don't forget, this phone actually has pen support. So uh, you can use a stylus with this phone, uh, which is really nice as well, too. And battery life is actually pretty good on this device. 5,000 milliamp battery. You also have wireless charging as well, too. And the battery life is great. It lasts all day for me. And yeah, the standby time is also awesome too. So this is overall just an excellent choice. Next is the iPhone XS. This time last year, this phone, I had picked it up for around 300 bucks. Now it's literally at like 215. Uh, you can find it for 200 even now. Um, so this is still an excellent 
uh, phone here, guys. It's got the glass back, stainless steel. I still think this is one of my favorite iPhone designs. It looks very classy still. It's IP68 dust and water resistant. What's awesome about this phone is it does have the Super Retina OLED display, and it does have a 5.8 inch display, so it definitely is a little bit more comfortable for people with smaller hands. It also has a 1080p plus display, 458 for the PPI, which, believe it or not, is even better. The display on here is better than the iPhone 11's uh, IPS panel that's 720p. So this is just still a really nice display. You also have iOS 16.3 on this phone, so it does have the latest version of iOS. The Apple A12 chip up on here as well. This phone is plenty enough fast for me. I really don't see too much of slowdowns or anything like that, animation glitches. It's still a very fast phone. Not only that, but I did do uh, gaming on this phone, and I was able to play PUBG HDR Extreme just fine on this phone. So it still does pretty good with gaming. I will say it does get a little bit... Um, warm when you're gaming for long periods of time so that's one thing I noticed but other than that the overall speed of this phone really is still great now this phone also has uh, face ID which works really well stereo speakers which are plenty plenty loud they sound really good really good bass quality now the cameras on the 10s you have a 12 megapixel standard and a 12 megapixel telephoto the only thing that's kind of aged about this experience is the secondary camera, for most people, they prefer uh, ultra-wide. This does not have that. It does have 2x optical zoom, but there's no you know, ultra-wide on here. For a phone that's 200 bucks, I think it takes pretty decent pictures for this price point. It shoots in 4K 60, 7 megapixel selfie cam that's used in 1080p 60. Video is still pretty good on the 10s as well, too. Um, overall, I think the cameras and good lighting is perfectly fine. Uh, you also have on here uh, the battery situation. So most refurbished phones will have to be over 80%. Now I did a drain test when I got this phone and you can squeeze about close to 6 hours of screen on time of regular use. For gaming I was getting around like 4 hours of straight gaming or something like that. So the battery life is pretty decent depending on your battery health. It has a 2,658 milliamp battery and then you also have wireless charging on this guy as well too. So overall the 10s is a great option and it's super cheap now. And last is the OnePlus 9. So again this time last year this phone was actually close to almost like 350 but the price has come down on this phone you know pretty much to the $200 price point. It's around like 230 250 and I think it's phenomenal. This phone is awesome, guys. Uh, so this one has the glass back but plastic frame. It still feels pretty good as well, too. Uh, you also have IP rating, but only on specific models. Uh, the screen on here is beautiful. It's a fluid AMOLED display, 120 hertz HDR 10 plus, really bright at 1100 nits peak brightness at 6.5 inches, 1080p panel, 402 for the PPI, completely flat display as well, too. This phone is running Android 13 with Octogen OS 13 as well too. One of my favorite uh, skins, or it used to be before they made so, such dramatic changes. But uh, the Snapdragon 888 processor on here is very fast. You can pretty much play anything in the Play Store. Uh, it's extremely fast, chip, very efficient. And again, this phone, with the triple, all 888 phones, they sort of heat up. Uh, if you sort of do intense stuff on it. Uh, you also have 128 gigs of internal storage and 8 gigs of RAM on here. And you also have very good sounding stereo speakers on here. Very fast under the display fingerprint sensor. What I thought was pretty cool with this phone, the camera experience. So you have the Hasselblad, um, you know, collaboration here. And I thought this phone, when it came out, it took some phenomenal shots. And I still think it takes great shots. 48 megapixel standard and a very high resolution 50 megapixel ultra wide. So it takes very detailed ultra wide shots. And then you have the 2 megapixel monochrome camera, 8K 30 uh, video, and a 16 megapixel selfie cam that shoots in 1080 30. Uh, and again, image quality is pretty good on here, especially at this price point. I think Hasselblad color, um, you know, science and just the overall image processing here. I think it still takes really great shots. And for this price, I don't see anyone really complaining about the photos. I think it's just a great camera so this phone also has very good battery life 4500 milliamp battery not only that but you get a 65 watt charger in the box or if you you know get it refurbished it does have 65 watt uh, capability so it charges from like 0 to 100 in like 29 minutes so it's very impressive you also have 15 watt wireless charging as well too so this is a fun, fantastic phone i love recommending this phone to people so be sure to let me know what do you guys think, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.